Hey guys, how are you? Hope you're all doing very well. This afternoon I'm going to be doing a review of a thriller from Japan. This is in the Japanese language English subs, released in the year 2000, directed by Takashi Ishii, and this film is called Freeze Me. Now, Freeze Me takes place with this woman. She has been gang raped by three rapists, and so five years later she has relocated to Tokyo. She's got a fiancé, and her life is back on track. Until one morning, when she comes out of her apartment down into the lobby, she sees one of the rapists is trying to get inside. So she tries desperately to get back into her apartment before the rapist can catch her but he catches her and he says that he's been looking for her for so long that one of his friends that were one of the rapists is getting out of prison and they want to get a reunion going in order to celebrate his release by basically raping her again. So this is a horrible situation that this main character is facing and so she is a prisoner in her own apartment as this rapist is holding her, he's raping her and he's just forcing her to wait there until his friends come. So this is where Chihiro, this is her, that's her name, Chihiro decides that she's going to have to take the law into her own hands. She doesn't want to report this to the police because she's worried about not looking like the victim as is the case with a lot of rape victims and so she decides that yeah she's going to get some brutal revenge that isn't going to involve a freezer. So that's all I'm going to give you on the synopsis. If you want to know more please go out there and see this film for yourself. Now my thoughts on Freeze Me. This is a really interesting subject. Now for rape revenge films I was expecting just another run of the, uh, run of the mill sort of I spit in your grave wannabe. But it certainly wasn't that and it actually made me think about this film because in uh, I spit in your grave it's basically a case of being raped and then getting horrible horrible revenge and getting the satisfaction out of seeing the rapists get what they deserve. But in this movie it's really a commentary on society and how we um, look upon rape victims sometimes. And in fact the rape victim can go from victim to the person being at fault and that's what prevents a lot of women from coming out and saying that they're being raped. And this movie depicted that. At the start of the film you think to yourself why did didn't you um, tell the police that you'd been gang raped? But then the movie comes along and she starts to feel guilty for it. That in some way maybe it was her fault. And that ma really makes you think because it is relevant to today's society. I think it happens a lot. And for that it struck me. I didn't expect to be able to think about a film that was along the lines of Ice Beauty in Your Grave. I thought it was just going to be a really brutal sort of um, revenge satisfactory film where you get satisfaction out of horrible pain being inflicted upon the rapist. But in this movie it is rape revenge and when the revenge occurs you, st you feel no satisfaction because you feel that this woman is not becoming better for it. It's that she's not feeling happy and that she, all she wants to be is happy. At the start of the film she is happy once she gets away. Five years have passed but when the rapists come back into her life things start to crumble. And so it's a different kind of rape revenge film if you're thinking that this is just going to be the standard typical sort of as I said well, want to be I spit in your grave. I would say check it out because it might surprise you. I thought the acting from the main character was very good. At the start of the movie you have no idea that she'd been gang raped until she sees this rapist and then it goes back into a flashback. It's a horrible rape scene. It's not graphic, it's not gratuitous, but it's enough to really hit you hard. So it had the platform from a really good film and I thought the supporting cast, um, her fiancé was fairly decent. It doesn't really involve a lot of characters, which was good. But the characters that are on the screen, they're somewhat interesting. And I thought the rapists especially, although they were very cardboard cut out, you didn't really get to know much about them. You really hate them for what they've done. But when the violence happens, the revenge happens, you, this really strange sense that, yes, they, they got what they deserve, but it still doesn't make you feel happy. It's done in a very somber way, and it's a, a way that will really disturb you. And, you know, I spit in your grave. The reason why that disturbs you is because it is very graphic, very hard-hitting, punches you like a, you know, a sledgehammer. But this movie is just very somber, and it feels very depressing. It doesn't have the feeling of I spit in your grave. It's shocking, but it doesn't need to be graphic, and it really hits you on a mental sort of psychology basis. So, I wasn't expecting that. Freeze Me, as far as Japanese cinema is concerned, is a movie I heard nothing about. I was um, lucky enough to have a kind YouTuber send me a copy. And after I saw it, I thought it had a lot of likeable qualities to it. I thought the revenge scenes were repetitive. That was my only problem with the film, is that they were very repetitive. When the, the killings happened, it seemed like it was deja vu, and it started to drag a little bit. And I thought the introduction of the rapist could have been done a little bit better. You kind of get an insight one by one, instead of all of them at the same time. And so I I thought because of the nature of the introduction of the rapist, it forced it to be a little bit repetitive. And because it's repetitive, it does become a little bit tedious to watch. But by the end of the film, right at the end of the movie, I thought it was very hard-hitting, very depressing, and it's certainly a movie that is different amongst the rape-revenge subgenre. So if you like that subgenre and you like the you know the revenge element of it, then I would suggest you check out Freeze Me because it is very different. Uh, it's a little bit outdated, you know, year 2000, you can sort of sense that it's the quality is not as good, but 
having said that, you know, I was surprised. I heard nothing about it, and um, yeah, I mean, it is worthwhile. But there are problems here and there that do prevent it from being a great film. But it's still a film I would recommend to you all. So overall, for Freeze Me, I'm going to give it three stars, and it's coming recommended. All right, guys, that's it for my review. Hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, keep watching movies, and I'll see you later. Bye.